And a lot of what we do here and, and I mean in our in our sector, what we focus on is really guiding those learning opportunities. When we talk about the principles that we do, when we talk about that planned curriculum, it's the idea that we plan the bigger encompassment, but we don't know every day necessarily what it's going to look like. I think if everybody just looks at it as there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's what works for your centre, what can you do, and know that it's a learning process, a growing process, it's never going to stay the same. Some people, you know, embraced, have embraced it um, wholeheartedly and some people, you know, it's with little bits and somewhat tentative, so it's just working together and just talking about where we want to go and what our goals are. What I'm finding within our centre and actually when I'm out in the greater childcare community as well, um, that people are feeling less um, hesitant about it. They're feeling much more confident, uh, much more comfortable in the ELECT framework. When we look at those principles, those are the core of what we do every day. We don't want it to be that prescribed for you to accomplish this, here is your six steps. It's okay, you do it, you're doing it well, how are you going to continue to do it? I think it's important uh, that people understand and that educators understand that the ELECT framework, so the entire document is used and, and from my understanding is, has been created to support, to be a framework. It's not to do as you see, it's to do as you need to do. And I think that that is, you know, the, the piece that maybe we've not been able to communicate as effectively, and that's something that, again, as a, as a committee and as, as an organization, as a, as a community, how do we start supporting each other going through that? We started about two years ago, and the first thing we did was really, we spent the first year just reviewing the guiding principles and really trying to understand what those guiding principles meant. It took us a year just to do that piece. We asked ourselves questions as to uh, individually what did it mean to each educator, what does it mean to us as a group, are we implementing those guiding principles already and if so how, if not what could we be doing and what could we be doing better with the guiding principles. I think after everyone got over the initial fear and decided that uh, it was actually easier to use elect than to be pulling pieces from here, there and everywhere, uh, it's actually been quite smooth. One of the first ways that they made the transition was with bulletin boards, so to involve our parents. They put up beautiful pictured bulletin boards of the children doing activities and, and putting in the root skills and what they're learning, you know, playing. I think it's really important that uh, program staff educators have time. It's all about time to be able to meet, um, whether you're in a small group with your own team or in the larger group, uh, to be having time to be uh, discussing and you know, problem solving. The non-contact time is the place where we're actually able to do those, those pieces when we talk about that professionalism. Um, it's not something that it's, a, it's not this extra and aren't you privileged to have it. It really is for us to really hit that professional need. We need to do observations, we need to do documentation, we need to communicate. When the elect um, wasn't so much like announced but became more on everyone's mind, it wasn't that much of a stretch for everybody. We were already doing a lot of the elements of elect anyway. It was just it now had a name. It's not going to look the same and it's not templates or a way to do elect. It's going to be different for everybody. The biggest thing that we've been able to do at Andrew Fleck is be able to provide the educators with time off the floor to be able to be doing their documentation and assessment. The elect is not a one-size-fits-all. It looks very different in, in depending on the program you're in and the children and families you're supporting. Just pick a principle and run with it. Just start. Start somewhere and it'll all come full circle, I believe as you're going to discover what works for your program, what doesn't, what needs to be changed, what can be expanded upon, what's taking too much time and maybe needs to be you know, made smaller, it's forever moving. The one principle that we've done a lot of reviewing with or discussion with is being able to engage uh, partners, uh, parents as partners in their children, child's early learning and care. Building those partnerships with families, building partnerships with the community. Um, and understanding the different diverse and cultural needs of our families. That's been an ongoing um, principle that we have continually reviewed and looked at how we're implementing it and how better can we do that. Look at the principles 
Look at what they mean to you. What do they mean to your day-to-day -day practice? How, you know, how are you doing it? And how can you change and, or build the pieces in that you might be missing? We value a lot of, as a family centre and as an educator I value uh, is the ability to make the mistakes and the challenges. It started becoming more natural to start questioning my own practices and that's something that we do um, actively but it's also um, not always prescribed. Sometimes through an evaluation process we would have more of uh, a self-reflection but it's also in the day-to-day -day things we do. What I appreciate is being able to look at it and say this is working for us right now. I'm definitely sold on it, um, true advocate of the ELECT framework and everything that um, it's doing to, to nurture our, um, our field as early childhood educators. And every educator has a copy of the ELECT so they have time on their own time or whenever they get time to be able to have a physical copy and to be able to be reviewing it. It is very different in every section and sector and nobody can do it the same because everybody's experiences are different and everybody's connections are different. I think that for uh, programs, if it's possible to implement those guiding principles, um, if we can embed those in our day-to-day -day practices, again, it's just going to raise the quality of our programs.